Hello and welcome to Circuit Crush TV. I'm your host, Brian Jenkins, and welcome to Arduino tutorial number 9. Today we're going to talk a bit about syntax and good programming practice. Now, just like English or any other language, C and other programming languages have rules. And these rules are referred to as syntax. If you get the syntax wrong, your program most likely won't compile, resulting in an error during compilation. And if by chance it does compile, your program will most likely not work as you intend. In other words, syntax is important. In our last video, we went into detail on how the compiler works and how your code gets from the editor in the IDE onto the brains of your Arduino board. Now it's time to think of the compiler as a most annoying English teacher in the world who takes everything literally. For example, let's say you type te rather than the by accident. And I'm not the best typist in the world, so this is something I totally do. But instead of realizing that you probably meant the and circling the air in red ink, she'll immediately stop reading your paper, give it back to you, and tell you she has no idea what you mean and can't read your paper until you fix it. Then, if you make another mistake, the process repeats until all spelling and grammar are perfect. Once that happens, she'll read it and you'll get a grade. Now, at first, this may seem intimidating. So let's talk a bit more about programming syntax. In English, you end each sentence with a period, like this. In C and Arduino, you end each statement with a semicolon, like this. For example, typing something like int my number equals 25 declares an integer named my number and sets it to 25. And we can verify this, and we see that it works. However, if we forget to add the semicolon where we should, the compiler will give us a cryptic error message, so remember to use them. To demonstrate, I'll go ahead and remove the semicolon, and then try to verify or compile the sketch again without it. And here we see that we have a nice, long, cryptic, hard-to-understand error message. So remember to use the semicolons, guys. I'm going to go ahead and put that back and re-verify it. Now, another point I want to bring up is that while you can put more than one C statement on one line, good practice, especially if you're a beginner, says to keep one statement to each line to avoid confusion. Now, what do I mean by that? So, for example, you probably shouldn't write a line of code that looks like this one I'm going to paste in here. Now, don't worry if you don't understand this code yet. Eventually, you will. But a better way to write this same statement would be to write it like this. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this and paste in the same statement written in a more human-readable, easier-to-understand way. Now, there are four things to notice about this block of code here above. First, like I said, it's a heck of a lot easier to read and understand what's going on. Second, each statement has its own line. Third, the first part of the if statement does not have a semicolon at the end. Finally, the second part of the if statement does have an indent and a semicolon. So these indents are also helpful for you. Indents in code make it more readable. And since C and Arduino ignore white space, good practice dictates to use indents with if statements and other types of control structures. We'll talk more about control structures in another video. Now, what's white space? White space is exactly what it sounds like. I could write something, and I'm going to go ahead and, and delete this code. I could write something like this, and we see here there's the white space in between these two statements. Or, I'm going to delete that, or I could write something like this. Now, notice the extra space in between these two statements. Now, this works just like the first example did. But this example is bad practice and sloppy. Both snippets will compile the same and produce the same result since the compiler ignores white space with no typing in it, which is all this space here. But to make your code neater and easier to understand, you kind of want to not use excessive space like that. Which brings us to our next point. Use good form and make your code easy to read. Comments and programming are one of the most basic yet useful things. There are a few ways to write comments in C and Arduino, and they can either start with two slashes like this, or you can enclose them in between 
to brackets like this. So let's do some sample comments here. This is an... As I said, I'm not the best typist, so you're going to have to forgive me for all my errors I'm bound to make here. This is an example comment. Now, comments can also occupy more than one line. So this is a longer comment. And takes more than one line. And if you have a really, really long comment, you can do something like this and use what we talked about before, the brackets and the asterisks. And this kind of comment here can also take up multiple lines. And I can put in here whatever I want to. But we're just going to keep it simple for now. Now, all of the above are valid comments. This one, this one, and this one. The compiler ignores comments. They are descriptive statements for humans to read, so you and others can understand your code. In other words, comments should explain what the code does. Good programming practice says to use them generously. And I'd bet you money that after a while, you will forget what something in your code does and burn hours of your time trying to figure out your own program. Don't be that person. Now, you can also use comments to explain lines of code that aren't obvious with the two slashes after a given statement. So this is pretty obvious, but just for example, I can say sets my number to 25. So yeah, it's pretty simple, but you get the point. It's okay to include comments on the same line as a statement too, just like here. You can also insert long multi-line comments in the beginning of your code explaining what the program does, who the author is, the date it was written, revisions, etc. using this method right here. There's a preloaded example sketch called Blink, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to open that up here. It's examples, basics, and then Blink. Let's expand this, and we can see here a whole bunch of comments enclosed in between the slash star, star slash. These comments give a ton of information about the program. It talks about what it does. It talks about who wrote it, who made modifications, and the dates. And there's other information here, too. I totally suggest that you start each and every sketch you write with a similar block of comments in a similar way. And this brings us to the final point of this video. Use comments generously. Now, there is more to say about syntax and good programming practice, of course. But to avoid catching a bad case of information overload, we'll address it when appropriate in future videos. To review. We talked about the importance of programming syntax, the semicolon, and writing code that's easy to understand along with comments. So that's it for this lesson. Hope to catch you in the next video. If you're interested in Arduino and microcontrollers, you'll love how to get started with Arduino in one day or less. Get instant access now by clicking the link below in the description.